ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, this is Travis Simulant Sours bringing you a best of three Strixhaven draft on MTG Arena. This is indeed the real Travis Simulant Sours, the one and only. So we're going to take the rare here. This card is incredibly powerful, letting you double dip on your spells. Ideally, it would not be in the same pack as the Orator or the Heated Debate, and we could get past them. But Scroll Wielder's pretty good. Uh, it's also worth splashing for if you are in Prismari or, Lore, or uh, Silver Quill. It is a getting there on power alone style card. I'm trying to think about what might wheel from this. It's like maybe a Beaming Defiance, maybe an Elemental Mastery of cards we'd be interested in. Sometimes I'll, I'll play Revitalize in Lorehold decks, but there's no guarantee we're Lorehold yet. Like, I don't care about this card anymore. I talked about this on stream some prior to the YouTube draft, but it's almost like you have pack one, pick two, pack one, pick one, pack one, pick one, pack one, pick one, pack one, pick one. You're just constantly picking the best card out of every pack so that you can try to figure out what the hell is open and then get into it. So I think there might be a temptation here to take something like Reconstruct History so that we could play the Scroll Wielder. Uh, I, I don't think I'd like to do that. I'm a little torn between Rutha and Witherbloom Apprentice. Rutha's very strong. Incredibly strong. And has the advantage of, if we did get into Jeskai shenanigans, we could play Rutha in the same deck with the Scroll Wielder. The downside is, like, what if Witherbloom's actually what's open at this table? Nah, I guess we'll have a Witherbloom deck that doesn't have the Apprentice in it. I'm okay with that. It does, but I don't care about these pairing. That's not a factor for me. The factor is which of these two cards is the strongest. Because if, if we're reading, in the last draft we did, we didn't actually commit to a color pair until the middle of pack three. No, pack two. All right, we're playing that. Like it was incredibly late. I think it was like pack seven. Pick seven of pack two. That's where we got in. I think Ruth is a better card too. But like, I think every pack we've seen has had a lash of malice in it. So we're, we're kind of by committing to this, cutting ourselves off from probably at least black. But we could do teamer stuff, maybe. We could do radiant scroll wielder stuff. Lorehold is often open as people don't seem to want to draft it, which works for me. I'll draft it. Problem is you're competing with uh, teamer players for red. That's a kicker cost, and I've seen it played multiple times. Not in the same draft. Okay, now we're starting to get interesting because we got us one of these here dust speakers, which I do like. We also got us one of these here Elemental Summonings. And I can probably spin the Historian. It's so hard to clear the way for that dude. I'm kind of thinking about just taking the Elemental Summoning. This is a pack where we could start to, to acknowledge that we're probably going to play blue-red. because I'm not seeing the white cards for it, and there's some good blue stuff here, but I, if I can continue picking red cards that are close-ish on power level, I'm going to do that. So I think I like the summoning a little bit more than the Dust Speaker. There's decks where I would not do that, but this isn't one of them. I also think we're likely to be splashing the Scroll Wielder. Now we've got Academic Dispute. I have played a Stadium deck, and it wasn't bad. Uh, Campus Guide is also relevant to my interest here. But I've always been pretty happy with Academic Dispute. It's a nice cheap spell to copy with Rutha, and if you've got enough um, summons to go grab, it can be a source of advantage that way. And we, we couldn't, like, I didn't take a Serpentine Curve earlier, and again, still, we can take a red card, just in case we get past a Lorehold Bomb next and be like, oh, okay, huh, we're Lorehold. 
But I didn't take the Serpentine Curve because I don't always love that in Prismari. It's a specific Prismari deck that wants it. Because you can kind of build this where you're like... Who was it was talking about it earlier? Was it Goose? Where you can have like an aggressive version with a bunch of uh, Frost Strikes or whatever. This pack kind of sucks. Unless you think we're Lorehold, in which case first year, Eager First Year is not bad. I mean, I, I, sure, I'll look. I know for sure we're playing red. I don't know what the other color is. I don't hate Enthusiastic Study, but I think that's a bit too early to pick it for me. Would not hate you if you, if you did, because it's still got that, hey, we, we're just picking red cards plan. Well, well, well. I believe we're getting a signal here. Do you see the signal? Here are three very good Lorehold cards that I am interested in. I'm going to take the best one, which is Divine Gambit. It is unlikely that I could wheel it from here. I have tried to wheel them before. I would also be happy to play the Rescuer and the Mentor in most decks, and this in some decks. But Gambit's mighty nice. I don't know that we'll splash for Rutha, but we could, so she gets to stay down here for now. These packs all kind of suck. I'm going to probably throw everybody for a loop and take the Shield Mage. Because if I'm splashing for another black card, I could see playing this. Now this was our opener, and not much wield, but we really didn't expect much to, right? The two cards we were thinking that we could get were Beaming Defiance and Masterpiece. And I'm going to go with the Masterpiece, as that looks like it could go in the deck we have currently. But there's no, like, this is my maybe pile. I think we'll probably splash Rutha if I can get the mana to work, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go nuts about it. This is basically a Rutha, if you think about it. I do like Thrilling Discovery, and I've also uh, Pillar Drop Rescuer has grown on me somewhat. There's a limit to how many fives you can run, and I think I can find one later. So I'm gonna grab this. We've got a big maybe pile, we've got some lessons, and we've got a solid lore hold deck starting over here. Maybe some of them spirit summons wheel. That'd be swell. They did not. Test of Talents did, which is actually quite a good card. I don't really want any of the rest of this. I suppose that can go in the maybe pile too. Like the right amount of cards could still move me off of Divine Gambit. I want to see if the lore hold excavation wheels. The Dust Speaker wielded. Alrighty then. I guess we'll play it. Well, we can still go relatively deep on graveyard shenanigans with like all of this stuff. There's my boy. He's in the maybe pile. I probably won't play this without like a Quintorius or some, something, but I don't hate siding it in. I don't think we're wheeling the Lorehold Excavation. But that's okay. We're getting some playables here. This is an interesting one um, because we've got Hated Debate, which I want, Professor of Symbology, which I want, um, Spirit Summoning, which I want, and Divine Gambit, which I want. I believe I can wield the Divine Gambit. I have watched countless people not take it. I do want to have enough good removal. I just, I kind of think I might need the Professor. So if I can pick that up in a couple more summons, we've got something going on. Yeah, premium two drop, I think we take. It's close, though. There's a spirit summonings, which I think I'd be very happy to have. This is way better than a goblin piker, and heated debate is way worse. It is not a top tier removal spell. It's a very playable one. But it don't kill everything you want to kill. 
I think we're happy to have this. This is giving us access to good summons. And I think I'm ready to say well, this is probably our color pair. My guess is these packs are not breaking particularly well for us. Although if there's somebody like maybe here who saw the Lorehold excavation and was like, ooh, I'll get into Lorehold now, we may end up competing with them, which would make me a little sad, but that just means we hedge a little bit more on the blue. If we're going to need to do that, the Archway Commons is relevant to my interests. I think we can probably say we're not playing the Owl and Shield Mage now. Gift of Estates is pretty reasonable card advantage, but not exactly the droid I'm looking for. Uh, I think we would play a Reconstruct History. I'm considering taking the Campus Guide and just assuming that we're doing the Rutha and Elemental Masterpiece bit. Which, if I am, arguably we would want a Fractal Summoning too, but like we can probably find that. I, I think I like the direction this is taking. We'll need a few more spells, and I suspect that we can find them. Defend the campus is not something I'm embarrassed to main deck. This is still kind of a maybe. I don't think we would need two masterpieces on the splash. If, if I took the creative outburst, we could start thinking about getting more into this, but I, I still feel after that first pack that Lorehold was what we're supposed to be going for here. So I'm going to take the defend. It kills fractals. Yeah, I think we're going to move into Jeskai and look to play three color. Mostly red white as a base, but with Rutha and uh, Elemental Masterpiece here. Which does technically open up fractal summonings as a pick. But I, I doubt we would take one incredibly highly. I think we are getting a little bit cut on Lorehold in this pack, but I also think we'll see it be incredibly open on the other side. This is a pack where I kind of don't mind taking the Fractal Summonings. We've sent one through, so we're going to see if that comes back. Like, if I'm going to play these, I should have access to two blue at some point in the game. Because at the very least, we'll have this in an island. I'm hopeful we'll also pick up a Prismari campus. You're thinking of Reconstruct History. So there's a world where we could get that and play it. There's also a world where, like, that um, Prismari card wheels... We are at 510 subs with 36 Stream Raider skins purchased. Uh, so the next unlock for us is at 600. You guys and gals have been very generous during our subscriber drive, and I am appreciative thereof. But I don't think I can play that berry in books unless I take another campus guide. Thank you for that, Yas. <laughs> Andy, thanks for the gift subs, dude. I don't love this, but if I take it, the blue splash is trivial, and we can be three-color nonsense if I need to be, <laughs> which I may need to be. Thank you very much, Andy. Y'all spam some cats for Andy. This is working out. <laughs> I told you we could spin that divine gambit, and we did. Now, can the reconstruct history spin? Because that would be mighty nice. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. <laughs> that bumps us up to 515. <clears throat> Ahem. I don't think we're playing any of this. 
I suppose there's no downside to having this in my size board. Yeah, these are weird wheels, but meh, it is what it is. I could play a Biblioplax. As long as we draw it before we draw the scroll wielder, that would work. And I could play a Thrilling Discovery. I, I've also seen some use out of Mercurial Transformation, but I don't mind one Thrilling Discovery. Because we, we could end up in a scenario where we've got a bit too many lands, and that could sort of help us out with that. Now, if my calculus is correct, we're going to see some really good lore hold cards in this next pack. Obviously, opening them doesn't necessarily matter, but we should get past them. Uh, heated debate, I'm quite happy to pick here. I'd, I suppose I'd be happier if we were in Quandrix, but... Eh. Mana base looks like a steep staircase? What do you mean? You mean the curve? Eh, a little bit. But remember, we got a third pick Urza's Rage out of this pack. Red should be open. I haven't seen a return pass caller in a fortnight. We want a Wrath in our deck. I think I could probably play one. This sets us up to be a little more controlly than I had anticipated, but, you know, we can make that work. I would like one Prismari Campus, please, or at least a Lorehold Campus. don't particularly want a Quandrix campus, although it would, in theory, be playable if we wanted something to scry off of. We could jam a combat professor, too. I'd be higher up on the elemental summonings if we had more ways to fetch them, because as is, we've got Academic Dispute and Professor of Symbology, which is fine, but not exactly busted. I'm not thrilled about study breaks, either. Although we could play some if we got them light. Hello Drop Rescuer probably has enough things to get back now to be worth an include. So I think we can take one of those. That's about all the top end I want, but it'll work. Guiding Voice would let me fetch my last summonings. Which I think we'd be interested in, and it's not bad on any of this stuff. We did some good work with Zephyr Boots in the last build as well, so like I'm sort of interested in that. Yeah, I, I was thinking there'd be red cards too, but what do I know? I don't want any of these cards. I suppose this is sort of like a Zephyr Boots I can build my own boots with. We might play that. But we're looking at what? a playable deck here already. Yeah, I think this is the deck. So the question is, which of these might I sideboard in? And I might sideboard this one in. Okay, apparently Teamer was what was actually open. But it's alright. If somebody's incredibly slow, I might side this in too. I don't think I'm looking to main deck it. It's important to remember that Campus Guide does not ramp you. It just helps you find the land. I don't think I want two dust speakers. I could see siding in another Defend the Campus, though. So 
So we could take this just so we have access to a scry land. Yeah, I probably need to. That means if we wanted to play the shield mage, we could. I could see siding in two of these. A humiliate? I don't think I would side in a humiliate. I think a lot of the strength of that card is playing it on turn three. Pillar Drop Warden is probably doing more work than the second mentor here. I think I'm okay with that. Overall, I think I've enjoyed having the masterpieces in the set be draftable. I don't think I want any of these. I suppose if there's somebody that's weak to something like this, we could play it. But I feel like I'd rather try to get the elemental masterpiece going. That was a weird draft. I, I felt like we got signals in pack one that this is what we were supposed to be doing. My, my guess is that somebody else was kind of skating the line and then opened a good lore hold rare. And decided to commit. We could play the Owl and Shield Mage, but I don't think I actually want it. Because I'd need to cut something for it, and I think we're getting more value out of everything else than we are that. It's questionable, though. So with two blue source, I think one island is enough, right? Because we've got the campus guide. There's two, three, four blue sources in the deck for two cards. And in theory, I could use this for the other one. That makes it incredibly unlikely we'll cast the fractal summoning because we'd kind of need to draw it in a hand that has the commons. But I'm okay with that. And this would leave us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine white and 7-8 red. That works for me. Oh, one too many. All right. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that'll work. Because mo most of our early game is white. So I'd like to make sure we're going to hit those. And then, if necessary, we can use the campus guide to get red. I don't really do a deck doctor, uh, but I will do a draft doctor. If you record a draft uh, on 17 lands, I can review the data. You'll need to screen cap your first pick and then get me the log. We did one of those earlier today. And it was fun. Uh, let's look at our Stream Raiders battle. Because me helping you look at the pile of cards you drafted and tell you they're bad or good doesn't really help you much. But me watching your draft and saying, here's what I would have taken can teach you a great deal. We're kind of getting surrounded here, team. It's a lot of Goblin Cowboys. That's an example of something where, like, I could be like, hey, here's some things that you could have taken as sideboard cards during the draft. Or here's some opportunities we could have picked up some lessons if you're playing best of one. It kind of does, doesn't it, Bistro? Rob with the kills, Jank with the assists, rewards... For Bowstrom, Rob Beauville, and Mauricio Blue. As I understand it, it's a bug in um, Arena, not a bug in 17 lands. All right, let's take this out for a spin, shall we?
That'll work. That ain't great, but it'll work. That's a lot of land we're gonna be sitting on. But that's what the thrilling discovery is for, so let's just draw it. It's an arena bug. It's been around forever, and I imagine they're not looking to fix it because they probably would have by now. So just screen cap your pack one pick ones if you want me to review them. I think we can care about that. That's good advice, Auntie. At least we can get a scry here. We'll drop Rescuer. I don't mind drawing that. We're obviously not playing it this turn. Because this turn is kills them own, next turn is elemental masterpiece. But playing that and getting back a 2-1 is not the worst thing I've ever heard of. But they, it can't be countered. How did they do that? It literally says that it can't be countered and they countered it. I don't I don't understand. I mean, all I'm saying is I didn't much care for it. No, it says on here that you put a counter on the creature, and this says it can't be countered. Imagine all the ward creatures had hexproof. Does that change your mind about it any? Because it changes mine a little bit. They're a land away from wrecking me. Okie dokie. That intro to Annihilation is changing my mind a little bit here. 
So I definitely don't want him to use that on my scroll wielder. I'm trading these off because they're a land away from them just being lethal. I don't want that either. Introduction to Annihilation is so good. We do have a Wrath. We can play towards that now. This is looking a little rough. I think Ward is way better from my my perspective than hexproof nonsense. I hated hexproof. Fighting voice. It's not what we need here. <laughs> Subbers. Skullinate, thank you for the resub, my dude. I think I need to go ahead and let him use this so we can try to draw into the wrath. Because I, I think their board state's too far ahead for me to catch up from here. And that's something they'll almost assuredly annihilate. Y'all spam some cats for Skullinate. Thank you, my friend. Dispute gets us another draw towards it as well. So I think given where we are now, chumping that doesn't really do anything. Still may as well trade these off. I kind of have to hit it off of Dispute, though. So let's first see if we draw it blind. I don't think there's anything in the board I can get that changes things, so I think we have to fire this. Yeah, none of this works. Does Gambit buy us another turn? Not unless they think I have something else. If I really maybe I can make them think I have something here. There's also the possibility they just put something in play and there's nothing I can do about that. But I can't imagine they don't swing team here. I certainly would. Yeah, that'll do. All right, I'll go PP. I'll be right back. Then we'll sideboard.
Like, I'd like to have access to a test of talents for this, which is a weird thing to splash. Like, a lot of the stuff that they're getting ahead of me with is spells, and they're certainly planning on casting a bunch of them. Like, this is super relevant late in the game. If that snakeskin veil hadn't gone off, we might have still been in business. And I don't think this guy's doing anything at all. It's a weird thing to splash. Alrighty. At least we can do some learning this time. Yeah, that probably needs to go. If they counter it with a hexproof thing, we can still use Academic Dispute on our turn and get a 2-1 flyer. Which will eventually get to be better than a 2-1 flyer. Although not immediately. Veil's pretty dang good. Every time I've had one, I've been happy about it. It's interesting that it's so much better than Professor's Warning. Whereas when I looked at Professor's Warning, it was in the context of a set where Bounce wasn't very good. But in this set, Bounce is very good. That's about the best you can ask out of a dust speaker. Although if we get to do it again, that's swell by me. Snakeskin Veil will usually do that too. At least in the situation where... Um, Snake's professor's warning was going to do it, that would probably do it too. So now we have the question of do we want to attack him with this, and I think the answer is just no. I can play an elemental summoning and a first year and be pretty happy. Uh, probably a little worse, frankly, although you can't end a game with Snakeskin Veil, but you can with God's Willing. This one needs a bit of work. Because Big Stupid Reach Boy. So we can throw this away with the idea of let's go see if we can find something to deal with Big Stupid Reach Boy. I don't know that I love that. Not the craziest thing I ever heard though, because I got a lot of potentially good top decks.
Yeah, I, I think I would rather go fish. I didn't think we were going to get to kill something. That's neat. Is there anything I want back right now? Urza's Rage is interesting. Right, it's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and we're at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We're still a ways away from that doing the thing. Not that it wouldn't still be useful. Because I could get the Biblioplex Assistant, next turn attack with all the flyers. I could also plan to draw it the turn after I draw... An island. Yeah, we're at 11 with the treasure. There's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So if there's a land under it, we could potentially just burn them out with it. Which I'm not opposed to. Let's give it a turn and see how this develops. Because using it to clear the air power is almost as good. It's awkward as I'd kind of need to see the card under it to know, so I might should have waited a turn, but I, I don't see a, re a compelling reason not to attack with both. I mean, that's pretty good. At sick double spells go, that's not a bad one. I think I'm going to go for it. Again, we got six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I would need eleven. I would need one more land, right? That's why they double blocked. It makes sense. But now all of a sudden attacking with these makes a little bit less sense. Problem is, I'm dead pretty quickly if there's not a land under this one, so it's a little scary. This is still 10 damage, and I could get in at least two from the air. But... My my plan has a problem now. They're at 14. No, they're not at 14. They're at way more than 14. No, it is not. We would still be one short. But that is no longer the plan. We have a new plan. We're going to have to slowly value grind this. Because they, they, they just went up to 19. Like, that's not going to work.
we can get there. It's just going to take us a little time. we got to deal all that damage over again. That is the best weather the storm I've ever seen. I do not care for them liking what they drew. So this may be where we need to get to 12, 13, 14 mana and have Ruth up. Well, ironically, there's an off. So do I just burn their face and then look for Radiant Scroll Wielder? Or do I burn this and start hitting for five? No, we're not one short. Oh, actually, I think we are. You're right, you're right. Because I can't kick it. Yeah, we're one short of kicking it. I guess that means land's an okay draw. Which is, I suppose, not the worst situation to be in. Get a little under the gun here. I suppose this is one way to do it. Although we could wait and see if we can draw three more lands, but I don't think we're going to. Yeah, because we need one more to pay for the kicker and then two more to copy it. Can't really cast that yet. But we do have another blue source in the deck. It could come up. Now that's a challenge. They're scurred. But they also heard you say that, Flaky. So now they're attacking with it. Where'd they go? I still overall feel like the, the gate is pretty dang good to have. And I think I want it. You can do anything if you try real hard and believe in yourself. It's a little bit of a different plan, but it's not one I'm opposed to.
trying to decide how important it is to have a blocker for that, and I, I think it's probably worth doing. This is not exactly something I want to trade off. I guess I can't even cast it right now. I was planning on casting it, but go figure. I, I was absolutely certain we had a spirit summonings in there somewhere, and then we didn't. Wouldn't mind drawing a couple of uh, white sources in a row. Right, it's getting scurry. I could use them uh, sources. There's things that we could hit that would be good. Why would you kill my dude? This is just delaying the inevitable. In a way, we could cast this and be pretty happy. Because their hand's going to be that and of uh, that. I think I'm doing that. I mean, or we could just kill them both. That's fine, too.
like topped it. What are you gonna top there? It's a moan? Okay, maybe. Lifelink heated debate's pretty cool. I mean, there's still some decent hits here, right? Like if they play Academic Dispute would be nice, Summoning, Masterpiece, Elemental Summoning, Guiding Voice, these all do something. I probably should have held one land there now that I think about it. Super nice to have the Wrath not come up until game three. I don't I'm looking for stuff better than a two drop here. Like that. Got a ton of value off of this thing. Not currently. The deck has the ability to. I cannot currently do it. Take my pause there for some reason. I should have held one of them lands. Thank you. The test of talents is getting a lot worse with Rutha in play.
I told you if we played enough games, we'd be able to cast the Fractal. There we go. Nice and easy. All right, Stream Raiders battle. While that's firing, I'm going to take care of some business real quick. Then we'll be back and do the thing. Here be. There are two reasons that we didn't make a 6-6 six, six and hold up test. The first is that any spell that they drew and resolved, they could copy with Rutha before we can counter it, so it wouldn't stop it. The second is that there's only two blue mana in the entire deck, so we could literally never cast a Fractal Summoning and still have blue mana left over. Uh, Adam with the kills, Cosmere with the assists, rewards for Cosmere, Kalk, Zibi, Jankshank, and Zulu Plumber. Although if we had had the mana, I certainly would have done it. Because it's not super likely to, like, help, but why not? You counter the spell while Ruth's ability is on the stack. Oh, neat. Okay. So we could have done that. Either way, we couldn't cast the Fractal and hold up a counter spell, and I needed the Fractal to kill him. I don't think the deck is planning to cast Fractal Summoning. It can only come up when we draw those two specific lands. Come on, Barbie, let's go party. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah. That's a whole different game plan than what I'm usually going for. Let's uh, get some shields up here, because I'm a little nervous about that. Somebody is thinking about enthusiastically studying. Hey, what's up, Mish?
Or did I just mono red? That's scary. That's very scary. What type of work do you do? I didn't discover the mysterious tapping sound. It kind of stopped though, so I think like getting the pressure out of the uh, herp derp helped. After turning the the water on, it seemed to be better. Because I, I haven't heard it. Groundwater sampling. Interesting. No idea what they're up to. But it looks like flyers are pretty good, so let's cast some flyers. How many interviews are you going to have, dude? Were they legitimately just mono-red? I don't think so with that many spells in hand. I think they're red-white. Is my guess. Yeah, I hope when you get the job, it's worth it, dude. You discover the job is interviewing people. Maybe you are. Let's try to kill it with this first. At least this kill it. And let's have more combat trick. Wish I had less combat trick. Wish Urza's rage was bigger. You can tap her. It's okay. You don't want to tap her. Okay. Well, it'll be bigger, but I'm also staring down a bunch of 4-4s. Four 
which is not ideal. Bit of a gambit here. Somebody was telling me that card's not very good. No need getting her expelled. It's a very great card. But the, the other people are bad at magic. if they don't understand how good that card is. It was really good in Kaldheim too, Commander Sprue. That was the secret. It was one of the best removal spells in Kaldheim, and it's one of the best removal spells here too. It's super swell. Okay, fine. The expel will not die in hand. You've had people use it incorrectly is what you're saying, which is a fine thing to say. It wheels because of misevaluation. It could cost triple white and still be pretty dang good. I can respect that, Commander. I'm just saying, I think a lot of people act like the card's terrible, and it got so much better. Vince, thanks for the raid, man. Y'all spam some cats for vents. We're just arguing about how good Divine Gambit is. Grumpy old men, are we? Because it's virtually unplayable, right? It's certainly not what we'd want to draw here.
What a terrible card. When I beat Sam Black in LSV, it was with a deck that had Divine Gambit in it. Because it's real good. You should try it sometime. You might like it. I think we take a blind draw next. We've already got two lands on the bottom. I still don't feel the need to expose her to an expel. There's no guarantee they ain't playing two of them. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like, you can't be mad at it for killing something that was going to kill you. If you're playing it and it, you don't have to, then you're playing it wrong. Which means it's going to look bad. And that's not Divine Gambit's fault. That's super swell. I could gain four life. But I suspect I can draw some useless cards and make it work. It gives me an excuse not to scry upkeep, which frankly is something I want, because it turns two lands into four cards. Build your own cram session. There you go. Now, I'm still not going to draw them on purpose. But if I do draw them, it'll be okay. Holy crap! Their head exploded. Thank you very much for the raid, Vince. I appreciate that. I hope things are going well in your world. If you are coming over from Vince's channel, I hope you like Draft. Because uh, that's kind of what we do here. If I was to rate myself, as some people do, I would be a 10 out of 10 on drafting. Probably a 7 out of 10 on gameplay. But I can draft. Twelve out of ten on handsome, in my mind. I think the most fun I had playing Among Us was when we played with Vince. That was absurd. Hunter's Group was really good, too. I don't know. That's a tough decision to make. You hire someone to play your decks. <laughs> Maybe I should. I mean, that does sound like good value, dude. I don't want to use Urza's Rage on that, but I think Urza was destined to rage at a 3 1. Because if I try to block it with a stupid mentor, they're just going to kill it and gain three, and like, they're playing it to gain life. They're not playing it to fly over and chonk me with it. But let us deny this as a possibility.
Donk. Those elemental tokens look pretty good in full art. Kind of terrifying. Thrilling Discovery is usually pretty good. It's not entirely unplayable, which I realize is high praise, but... It is a card you can put in the deck and not be terribly embarrassed to boot. That thing gonna hurt us a bit. May have to do the double block of sadness and hope they're on nothing. I got stuff that can kill it. I don't have it right now. Oh, good news is we can kill that. Yeah. Um. Real of Herpaderp. There's one that's in this set as a masterpiece. Get rid of this before it gets too big. I would like to have my scry. Oop. Yeah, Thrill of Possibility is the card I was thinking of. What you doing? I guess we'll find out. Expel check? I don't have one. I wish I did. Pilgrim is the best card in this set. Thank you for sharing. Uh, I think I know what card we need now. It is not Archway Commons. Because we might be in a good bit of danger here. D -d -d danger boat. I should hold that in case we hit the thrilling herpaderp. We may need to scry like a champ for our wrath. It's looking like that's probably the case. Before we chump block, let's see what we got going on here. Biblioplex assistant, what do you do? You make sure I don't draw my wrath which I kind of want to draw, and you don't help me kill this, unless we want to gang block, which we could do, but I feel like this is not the way. Because we've also got um, Defend the Campus, and I need to be able to block this idiot. Campus Guide, huh? Nope. Can't even cast her. So I think we're on Get Wrecked is our current plan. Sometimes your people need a place to go, Bistro Math. All right. Overcommit. You should cast that Fractal Summoning.
There you go. It means I kind of have to take a blind draw. We'd be taking almost lethal. Okay, basically lethal. No life gain. Do these need to be lands? Or creatures, I suppose. And I need to straight up scry into the wrath. So ideally... Yeah, that kills me. I wonder why not do that pre-combat so that you don't lose to expel. Just for fun. Where are we going to hit it? The world may never know. It could have been a thrilling discovery. All right, so we've got one defend the campus. It kind of feels like I might want two of them. Because they got some big crap in here. That campus may need defending. Biblioplex assistant makes me sad. I don't want to play it. I don't feel like I really need Test of Talents either, but I could play it too. Problem was, there's nothing just like actively bad to take out, but let's give this a go. This might have been better anyway. It'd have been very thrilling if we discovered a wrath. Yeah, we could have done it. We could have been a contender. Hunt for Pokemons. I'm going to see if they chomp. I didn't really expect them to. But it would have been nice if they had. Why you gotta do that? I had this whole hand worked out that was pretty good. And Trixie Fat Hobbit ruins it. They also missed a land drop, which is significant. And means this is basically dead. We could Divine Gambit one of them. I'm sure that would work out really well. This card's terrible. I don't know why people play it in draft. I've been trying to explain to people how bad it is, but... I think we take a Scry here. They will eventually find the lands we're looking for, and I, I don't think we're realistically going to race the life gain deck. Urza may have a day to rage, but not this day. I could probably take another scribe, but I suspect they're going to play that down. This guy just doesn't do anything. Yeah, let's let's try to scry into I don't know pair of four fours or something. We can rage that on our turn. And get this down. Cause I do think that's gotta go. That means we get the scry in. And that leaves us with what? Two lands on the bottom now? This could be a long game. 
it's either going to be real short where they start casting stuff and kill us or it's going to take a little longer. I could get me a fractal. It would be a 5-5 five five this turn. That's not insignificant because we was having problems with 5-5s five before. It does kind of turn off Thrilling Discovery. But I think we can go for it. I haven't taken Prophecy very highly. I've played it a couple times, but I've never been thoroughly whelmed by it. Yeah, we got something to block a 5-5. That works out all right. We need to kill this. I mean, need is a strong word. Maybe I can convince them to chump block with one of them fellas. Let's see what you want to do here. It's better than a rummage sometimes. I mean, that speaks well to how good rummages can be. <laughs> Mooch! Thank you for the resub. Y'all spam some cats for Mooch. Thank you, my friend. I think I got a flonk. got a combat trick. I'd love for you to use a combat trick. Even if it's a flunk, we're a little sad. We don't get a two for one, but yeah, we prevent them from getting a two for one, which is probably good enough. We kept it. Hey, what's up, Andy? I'd say it's a pretty good day. things considered. I don't think there's any reason to assume they have a bookworm, no. It might. I don't know why they didn't play anything there. Does this get anything back that I care about? Not really. I mean, it is a flyer. It does get me to a 2-1. Gambit looks tempting here? I don't think so. Our board is answering that. 
This is where you would be misplaying Gambit and leading to people thinking it's bad. If your board can handle something, you don't need to use Gambit. I think this is worth keeping. Because it gives me something to do next turn and present at least something that can begin a clog. But this is... The Gambit does not look tempting to me here at all. That Witherbloom Pledge Mage is currently not going to kill me. If there's a point where it's going to kill me, then the Gambit comes out. It's worth noting that they know we have a Gambit. So they might have tried to play out something else to get us. If they didn't know we had it, we would still be holding it. At this point, whatever they have, unless it's a, even if it is a bookworm, they could almost cast the dang thing. I'm just saying, you don't need to use removal spells for something your board can handle. Let's say that we clear that, and then they have nothing in hand, and we trade a 4-4 four, four for a bunch of pests. We're not that far ahead on the board. And we just sort of broke the board stall with the flyer. Yeah, they just cast it. But our plan now is to go to the skies. And it's a pretty good plan. Plex? I don't know what Plex is. Like Plexiglass? They're holding a removal spell in a land. That's what they hold. Blex? Oh, the Pest Lord? I don't think that would ruin my day. It's a 3-2. That is very manable. But our board can handle it. You don't fire off removal just because you can. What's up, Wallet? What if they do have a bookworm and they're not playing it because they're worried that I'll get rid of it? We're ahead and inching our way to more ahead. Now I'm kind of comfortable doing it. Because they're on bloody nothing. And our board could not currently handle it.
I would play Dramatic Finale in every deck that could possibly cast it and several that couldn't. It will double the amount of creatures that you have and pump all of the tokens that you're saying you have. But I do not play sealed, so I do not know for sure. You've told me that you can play everything in sealed, so why not play both? Man, how are we ever going to deal with an 8-8 Trampler? We don't know that though, Daryl. There's unknown information. I hear what you're saying, but if, if you're taking Divine Gambit and playing it as soon as you possibly can, that's why everybody thinks it's a bad card. Glad to hear it, Zach. You don't need to win the games fast. You should really hold removal. That's what you should really do. They already killed Marutha, right? They got it with an agonizing remorse. I'm kind of fine sitting on the top. There ain't a lot of creatures they can have that can take care of this. Although green's more likely to have them. That is the opposite of what you should do, because that would mean that you're making plays in the past with knowledge you have in the future. I'm playing best of three because best of one made me unhappy. What you got in here? They do have a mass. Yeah, they've actually got pretty good creatures for this. But they've got essentially three draws that when that stabilize. And very few others. So I'd say we're likely to win from here. I don't think they have any now. I don't think Silver Quill would work if there was a Mammoth Spider or something. Let's do our Stream Raiders battle, because I, I think our sideboard's where we want it. I'm just saying, if you are drafting and spewing off your removal as soon as you have a target for it, when your opponent has cards in hand that you don't know about, you only do that if you are losing the game. Or if you could use the removal spell and win it. But if you're sitting there staring at each other, you're at a board stall, I'd rather have a board stall where I've got a removal spell in hand than one where the board's a little less stalled, but they could top deck a bomb and kill me.
it is sometimes great, but that's also just going to lead you to scenarios where you're sad you played a Divine Gambit. Adam with the kills, Jank with the assists, rewards for Bronco, Wizard, Jank, Shank, Wonton, Soup, and Scar. All right, it's Clint Eastwood Orc. They're orcs, right? That's what my orc slayer is for. But you also don't know that they have fight spells in hand, right? Like that's that's the the, the problem. Congratulations, Bob. I've played green decks that didn't have a mage duel. I've played a lot of green decks that didn't have a mage duel. I was sad I didn't have a mage duel. But if they've got three cards in hand, I'm not going to assume that one is a mage duel. One might be. Might not be. You don't know. And that's the scary part. I don't know. I feel like we're arguing for the sake of arguing. I, I, I win more games when I don't use removal on things that my board can handle. And that has become my kind of de facto way to play. It's the second best green creature in the set? Hardly. Where are you getting your evaluations? I'm not sure that it's the second best green common creature in the set. So would you be firing off a Divine Gambit right now on this? Like, no questions, just get it? And we may end up doing that. You know, for fun, let's test your theory. We should proactively kill this. I should have done it pre-combat, but let's test your theory. We should proactively kill this to avoid fight spells. Well, now we know they don't have any creatures. How about that? Now, the downside is if they play something big we can't handle, we could still be in trouble. Then again, maybe not. It is a honking big risk. It's one I'm a little uncomfortable with. They're killing too many of my things. I wish they'd stop.
So we would have to hit Gambit or defend the campus, which I could also easily afford. Because they need to kill this right now. I don't mean to pick on Daryl too much. Like, there is some validity to the case that he's making. I think the squirrel's a little better. But I should probably stop picking on Daryl. I, I, I do firmly believe that people misplay Divine Gambit way too much. And that's why they think it's bad. Hey, look, they did have a bookworm. But Gambit would be real nice right about now. I don't think we can do that here, though. Because I need to be able to block this thing. That sucks. Because we're going to need a gambit for the bookworm now. So ideally we hit gambit, not mastery. They should not have an attack this turn, but they might. Why not defend the bookworm? That delays the problem. It does not solve it. And that means if I do hit the Divine Gambit next turn, I won't have it for the Bookworm. Welcome home, sweetheart. I love you. And I'm glad to see you. Defend the 4-4 and take 7? That seems terrifying to me. Why would I kill the 4-4 when we can invalidate it entirely? Behold, as they don't attack. Your life total is irrelevant. All that matters is can we kill this bookworm? And we can kill this bookworm. This is game three. But once the board's controlled, their life total doesn't matter anymore. And the board's about to be controlled. That was a Divine Gambit with lifelink, by the way. What's up, Mel? It's, things are going well. How are things in your world? Girl wielder's absurd. Reminds me of, uh, what were the devils from Innistrad you could do that with? We do. We have Guiding Voice and Inkling Summonings. And we can play the rest of the game with Test of Talents up. <laughs> Sadly, no. It's going to be a while, but we'll get there. The DJ at your boyfriend's favorite club has been streaming... X, yeah, that's cool. Sure. No, I think I'll keep it. After all, why not? Why shouldn't I keep it? You got any more of them mortality spears? No. 
certainly don't have these two. Because I can get at least another 4-4 off of this. I might could even do better, if you think about it. Well, it's going to take a minute, but it's okay. Because we can Guiding Voice into Fractal Summoning, cast it, and then cast it again. You cast Test of Talents on a heated debate. Nice. You stop it! I had plans for that. Did they have any cards we care about? I may be firing the Scambit off next turn on the Pledge Mage. Well, it's going to be quite some time before I'd want to do that. They had a ley line, so I. They mill out first. I think I'm supposed to sit. Casting fractal summoning off the scroll wielder doesn't seem great. You can pay the cost. It would have been a 7 7 and another 7 7. Why would you not want to do that? Yeah, they've got cards that, that are bad for me, so we're going to have to sit for a bit. Now we can get a Fractal Summoning and start to do something. We can also kill this. Make a big boy. They did. They could have blocked with the Kirog too. So if this can take out this the five five, we can start attacking with more stuff. And if it can't, we're still at the same board state we were at before. Nothing wrong with being in the basement, Mel. I don't think I commit much more to this board. Uh, we have 15, they have 14. There's 10 damage when we need it. I mean, do we want to clear this out? Maybe. I'm going to give it one more turn and decide. Because I still can't deal with a uh, giant fractal off the top. Now I can. 
We got anything to get back with this fella? I guess a first year ain't the worst thing. Speeds up the clock a little bit. Well, it kind of doesn't, though. This should scream at them that I have a wrath. So I think I'm going to play the first one that they know about. Rather than leave up heated debate. Okay, so it's time to decide if we want to wrath here or not. I think the answer is probably yes, but we'll see what we draw. Yeah, I think so. I think we can recover with uh, Rutha and friends. It sucks, but that 8-8 is going to kill us. I could just... Oh, this is funny. I don't even need to do that. Four times two is uh, not having to wrath. We are leading on library count. Yeah, we're never going to cast this Wrath. Do I find these kinds of games fun? Yes, very much so. As far as I'm concerned, this is magic the way Garfield intended. What's up, time? Huge fan of winning. I don't know if they can afford the one life here. Yes, yeah, slow grinding methodical games are my favorite. I do not like games where someone plays a one drop and then puts something on it and then wins the game. I can't remember what else they had. Uh, there's a Scryland in the deck. We do not have one in play currently. Yeah, I'm not a fan of those either, Daryl.
Spectre defense is actually a problem. But not if they block with it. And that life total we were also worried about. Starting to look a lot more manageable now. Good game has been called. Are you still worried, Andy? All right, chat, say goodbye to YouTube. YouTubers, if you would like to watch the drafts live, you can do so at www.twitch.tv slash simulan. As soon as this clicks, we'll do the thing with the stuff. I can't end the I can't end the YouTube video until they see the packs, right? There you go. Yeah, we've had a good couple of runs here. All right, we'll see you next time, YouTube.